Hello everybody, it's Adrian for Wipecard Online and I'm all about the details. Now 2020 has been a very interesting year for the local automotive scene because despite the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we still managed to witness a few new car launches, some of them super high profile and among them are the 2020 Proton X50 which took the market by storm. Other new model launches include the all new Honda City, Nissan Almera, Mitsubishi Expander. But as we approach towards the end of the year, all these kind of new car launches would definitely slow down. So what's next? What can we as consumers look forward to in the new car market coming 2021? So here are the top five cars that are coming to Malaysia in 2021. Download the official Webcar app now on Google Play Store. The hottest, most highly anticipated car of 2021 would definitely be Perdua's upcoming compact SUV, codename D335L. It's based on the Toyota Race and Daihatsu Rocky, and it's powered by a 1 litre 3 cylinder turbo petrol engine paired to a CVT automatic. Now, uh, where the Proton X50's 1.5 turbo is all about the speed and performance, the D355L's 1 litre turbo is all about fuel efficiency. In Japan, the Toyota Race front wheel drive version quotes a 5.3 litres per 100 km fuel consumption figures which is about the same as a Perdua Beza 1.3 litre and that is amazing. The Daihatsu Rocky as well as Toyota Race in Japan comes equipped with super advanced features such as adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So here's hoping that Perdua is able to offer these kind of advanced features into their D55L SUV and it'll be the most advanced Perdua ever. Now, even though it's also a compact B-segment SUV, the D55L is not a direct competitor to the Proton X50 and I've detailed it in a previous video, so make sure to click on the pop-up banner to watch it if you haven't. Now, the main reason why these two are not a direct competitor is because of their market positioning. The X50 is more of a premium, sophisticated SUV. The D55L, on the other hand, is more of an affordable yet high-tech SUV. And definitely expect the prices of the D55L to be much cheaper compared to the Proton X50. Now the second car or cars I should say is updated Proton Iris and Persona which is coming in 2021. Now you might be wondering why another update? Didn't Proton just given the Iris and Persona a facelift in 2019? Well, yes, but word has it is that Proton is looking to drop the CVT automatic in favor of a 4 speed automatic torque converter as seen in the saga. Now, the sluggish and noisy character of the CVT just hampers the drivability and fun factor of the Iris and Persona. They are both very interesting cars to drive. But because of the CVT, it just takes away some of the feel. Now, having a torque converter, a conventional torque converter, albeit with only four ratios, would definitely improve the drivability as well as refinement as seen in the Saga 4 AT that we've driven earlier. So yes, something very interesting to look forward to. Now, the second thing about this update is that um, there have been spy shots seeing that the Iris and Persona using a floating touchscreen infotainment system. Now, this system might be a newer, better system that's running on a later version of the GKUI operating system, which you know improves the uh, usability as well as the uh, operations, making it smoother, quicker to use. So that's pretty interesting. That's a very good update as well. Uh, but the last and I guess most uh, interesting to some of you guys is the Iris Cross version. Yes, uh, similar to what Perdua has done with their Axia style. It's essentially a pseudo SUV accessories that makes the car look kind of like an SUV. So you get roof rails, a taller right height, body claddings around. We've seen spy shots of the car running about and I don't know, why would anybody want to buy something like that? But anyhow, it's coming. Next car on the list is the Toyota Corolla Cross and unlike the Iris Cross, the Corolla Cross is actually a proper SUV. 
Now, uh, UMW Toyota has been rather weak in the SUV game because of the lack of locally assembled offerings. Uh, so it loses out on the price advantage compared to equivalent rivals that has locally assembled operations. So put, the, put things into perspective, the only two SUVs that UMW Toyota sells are the Toyota RAV4 as well as Toyota CHR, priced at 200,000 ringgit and 150,000 ringgit respectively, which are much, much more expensive than the equivalent Honda HR RV and CRV. But the Corolla Cross is set to change all of that because uh, it's going to be locally assembled right here in UMW Toyota's uh, Bukit Raja Punt. So it's definitely going to give it uh, and it enables UMW Toyota to price the Corolla Cross at a much more competitive price point. Now, a little bit of background story to the Toyota Corolla Cross uh, it essentially shares the same platform with the Corolla Altis, TNGAC, however the rear suspension does not use double wishbone, it uses a more conventional torsion beam setup unlike the Corolla Altis. So having torsion beam setup, it means that it's more cost effective as well as it frees up more space for the rear seats as well as the boot, uh, something that's uh, severely lacking in the Toyota CHR which is space, so the Corolla Cross fixes all of that. Now in Thailand, the Corolla Cross is offered with two powertrain options, a 1.8 litre naturally aspirated engine as well as a 1.8 litre hybrid. So it remains to be seen which engine options is going to be offered in Malaysia, but we have a feeling that the 1.8 litre hybrid will make its debut here in Malaysia. Now here's a piece of sad news to all you Honda fans out there because Honda has confirmed that they will not be bringing the all new 4th generation Honda Jazz to the ASEAN region. Uh, in its place, it's going to be a city hatchback. Yes, the city name will be on a sedan as well as a hatchback. It's kind of a shame though because the all new Honda Jazz looks pretty cute in person when we've seen it in uh, at the Tokyo Motor Show last year. So, um, not much has been revealed about the city hatchback. We've seen spy shots of it, uh, leaked information on it. So we know that the city hatchback is essentially, well, a Honda City sedan with a hatchback. That's basically it. So expect it to share the same exterior design, interior features, and even powertrain options. So for the ASEAN region, the Honda City is powered with three uh, powertrain options. First one is the one liter three cylinder turbo, which we don't get in Malaysia. Next is the 1.5 liter naturally aspirated DOHG engine, as well as the 1.5 liter IMMDE HEV, the kind of hybrid system. So when it does come to Malaysia, expect uh, the city hatchback to be offered with the 1.5 liter as well as the 1.5 IMMD. Now here's the more important question: How much would a Recon Jazz cost? The fifth and final car to make this list is the Mazda BT50 and we know that pickup trucks are super popular over in this side of the world and the forthcoming contender would be the Mazda BT50 as confirmed by Dato Francis Lee, a CEO of Burma's Motor who mentioned that it could come as soon as uh, first quarter of 2021. So what exactly is the BT50? The new BT50 shares the same platform as the all new third generation Isuzu D-MAX. Not the D-MAX that's currently on sale in Malaysia, but the one that went on sale in Thailand. So we know that it's a Isuzu underneath, so it's going to be a reliable, uh, sturdy workhorse. But dressed in a fancy suit, which is called the Mazda Kodo Design Language. The interior is also beautifully laid out as with any modern Mazdas. Uh, so Mazda has given as many premium touches as they possibly can into the cabin of the BT50. Now globally, the BT50 is only available with one powertrain option, which is Isuzu's 3-liter turbo diesel. However, there's also a possibility that they'll be getting the more efficient 1.9-liter blue power turbo diesel. Um, However, it remains to be seen which one will make its way to Malaysia. Now, uh, hopefully when it comes to Malaysia, the BT50 will be equipped with the full suite of ADAS just to make it more competitive and as competitive with its other rivals on the market. There you have it, the top 5 new cars that are coming to Malaysia in 2021. Let me know in the comment section below if I've missed out any of your favourite cars. As always, thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this.
Download the official Wapcar app on Google Play Store now for all your latest news, reviews and comparisons to help you find your next perfect car. See you there!